There is a $1 trillion industry that is about to be completely decimated by generative AI. And companies are investing billions into figuring out how to survive. And they've come up with a three-point plan. And it's a plan that can work for any creative professional, including artists, editors, and writers like me. Welcome, everybody, to the MetaStyle YouTube channel. And uh, the reason I'm talking about this topic is because not only am I a fiction writer and an editor who's very much interested in what generative AI is going to do to my profession, but I'm also a technology journalist. And at my day job, I've talked to business executives who are using AI and to the consulting industry that is all about providing expertise. And expertise is the thing that generative AI is going to disrupt. So they are putting billions into this situation. Uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers has already made a $1 billion investment to try to figure out generative AI. Ernst & Young is putting in 1.4 billion. Accenture is investing 3 billion into this. They see this coming. They know how disruptive it's going to be. And in fact, the consulting industry is probably the number one industry most vulnerable to generative AI disruption. And I've been asking them, so how's this whole AI thing going? Uh, what are you guys planning to do about it? And they have uh, basically three directions that they're going into or a combination of these three directions or all of those three directions at once in order to survive. And those three avenues can be followed by any professional whose business value depends on their expertise or any creative professional. Now, AI is not something that's gonna go away. Like I said, I've been covering technology for more than 20 years. This is the single biggest, fastest adoption of any technology I have ever seen. Pretty much, I mean, in surveys that I've seen, 93 to 99% of CEOs are investing in this. They are doubling down on it. Companies that are investing in generative AI are already seeing massive returns on investment. The venture capital money that's flooding in, every single indicator out there is pointing towards immense growth and immense transformation potential. So you're not gonna be able to sit this out. You're gonna have to figure out a way out of it or you're gonna retire. But for those of us like me who are too young to retire, stay tuned. So the first step, um, the first avenue, the first major investment that consulting companies are making is to go all in on the AI. They're gonna be disrupting themselves by building the AIs that's gonna destroy their business before somebody else builds that AI and destroys it for them. So for example, uh, consulting companies answer questions about, comp about what companies should do about a particular business question. You can ask ChatGPT that same question. ChatGPT is not going to give you a very good answer because it doesn't know much about your company. It only knows stuff that it's kind of cribbed from the internet, right? It doesn't know any detailed proprietary information, and you don't want to give it detailed proprietary information because you don't want OpenAI to know all this stuff and tell the next person who asks a question. So what the consulting companies are doing is building safe, secure, private large language models that companies can use knowing that the information isn't going to leak out. It's trained on all their corporate data, on their financial data, on their market analysis and positioning and predictions and all the secret sauces that they have. And um, they don't want to maybe necessarily spend all the time and effort creating these models themselves from scratch because that's difficult. But consulting companies have the brain power to do it. And they're investing all this money in doing it. So they are doing it themselves. They're building a version of ChatGPT that are designed specifically to answer companies' questions. 
Now, you might say, how the world can this possibly apply to writers, editors, and artists? I mean, we don't have hundreds of billions of dollars to spend on this, right? So um, now some publishing companies might have millions of dollars to spend on this, and they already are. But what can we as individuals do? And in fact, we could do a lot. If you're training a model from scratch, yes, that gets expensive. You need a lot of GPUs and, and data centers and all this other stuff. But if you're starting with a pre-trained model and customizing it or fine-tuning it, you can do it for very low cost or even for free. There's tutorials online about how to do it. You do not have to be an AI expert and regular artists and writers are already building their own custom models. And we're all starting from scratch. Nobody really has a head start on this because this technology is brand new. It's being invented as we speak, and it literally gets easier and easier to use every day. Every new model that comes out is more user-friendly, does more of the technical heavy lifting for you, makes it more possible for a normal everyday average human to do stuff with it. So um, to, to the main focus is to figure out how you can use AI to bring in new business and to disrupt some of what you do before somebody else disrupts it for you and package it up in a way so that you can make money from the disruption. So for example, if you're an artist with a recognizable style, you can create an AI that makes images in that style. And then instead of losing income to the generic AIs that ripping off your style, you can actually turn it into profit center and a lead generator. So some customers out there will wanna pay a little bit for an AI generated work in your style, but others will wanna pay more for custom human made products and they might like experiment with your AI, like it, like what they see, and then upgrade as they get more money, they might upgrade to something a little bit more custom, a little bit more unique, a little bit more special. But either way, you as the artist keep the money. If you're a writer, you can say, create an AI that generates short stories set in your story universe in which the reader is the main character. Or if you're an editor, you can create a custom GPT that analyzes client work in a safe way based on your own unique approach to editing. And these are just like three off the top of my head ideas for what you can do. People are gonna be inventing a lot of things. There's gonna be an explosion of apps and tools like nothing we've seen before. And you can be the next Uber. You can be the next Angry Birds. You can be the next Amazon even. With generative AI, you do not need technical skills to start. The AI can handle the technical skills for you. All you need is an idea or a problem you want to solve. So you might ask, oh, well, yeah, it's all well and good, but aren't AIs trained on stolen data and they're being sued by everybody and it would be immortal to do this? So yes, some AIs have been trained on data gathered without permission. And that's all playing out in the courts right now. But there are also AIs that are only trained on fully licensed data. Adobe Firefly is the biggest example of that for image generation. And there are also others like the Clem large language model that was just released in February. There's even a whole nonprofit de dedicated to um, putting their stamp of approval that a, nov a particular model is legally licensed, doesn't infringe on anyone's copyrights. And I'm posting the description, the link to all that in the description below. So um, you can use one of those models and there are now open source tools that let you build your own model from scratch using any data that you want. And um, some of these you can run on a home computer. The, the technology is literally evolving faster than any technology that has ever been seen before. It's breaking Moore's law. It's doubling in capability every three to six months. 
it is it is an absolutely insane piece of change. I cannot stress that enough. Um, if you can't do something today, wait a month, you'll probably be able to do it. Now, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do it, this at all. But you do have to be aware of the fact that other people will be doing it. And you might need to adjust your positioning, your marketing, uh, your brand, your author brand to be aware of this fact. And I will talk more later on in this video about how you can do that. But first, let's go on to plan B. Now, plan B uh, and consulting companies are all over this in conjunction with plan A is to become more productive by using AI. So um, now AI tools are being built into everything. You're already using generative AI, whether you know it or not. Uh, search engines are adding generative AI. Uh, your phone's personal assistant is adding generative AI. Grammar checkers have generative AI in them. Photo filters used to touch up your pictures. They have generative AI. Um, every software vendor that I talk to is adding generative AI to either improve functionality, to improve user interfaces, or to add new features that weren't possible before. A Microsoft Word is adding AI to help you write better. Your blogging platform is adding AI to help you generate better post titles and easier promote your work. Canva has added AI. Everything has AI. But that's not really what the consulting firms are looking at when they're talking about using AI. And this is something that writers, editors, and artists can do as well. So they are getting out in front of how everybody else is doing it. Because if everyone else uses something, it's no longer a competitive advantage. So instead of just using Microsoft Word to you know, fix up their grammar, using AI, uh, they might be using a custom model trained on their own company's uh, communications and writing styles and um, with its own information base and knowledge base to check for accuracy, that kind of stuff. So it really ramps it up uh, quite a bit. So uh, oh, for, here's an example. When photography was first in invented, Portrait painters were freaking out, like, oh my God, why would anybody have a portrait painted if you, they can just get a photograph in a second? So some portrait painters leaned into the new technology. They were like, well, I know composition, I know lighting, I know how to get people to pose for a good picture. I will use those skills, but in a photography photo, uh, portrait studio instead of like a hand-painted portrait studio. Um, but some use the photography to become more productive. For example, many portrait painters today work from photographs instead of making you sit still for, for, your, for your portrait. So this is the way that they're getting more productive and improving life for their customers a little bit. Um, and they might also be using the internet for marketing and they will take pictures of the final product and sell those pictures. So they're leveraging their technology, even though the, the core thing that they're doing, they're still painting by hand. So for example, an artist can use AI to generate inspiration images for their client to choose from, and then paint the painting that the client picks. Or they can use AI to create the first draft of a product and then add finishing touches manually or they can create the first draft manually and then use AI to add some finishing touches and, and uh, refinements. Editors can use AI to do the first pass on a piece of text, then add their own analysis on top of that. Or they can start out with their own manual analysis and then use AI to check to see if they missed anything. But either way, they will gonna be more productive than an editor who doesn't use AI at all. And again, I'm not talking about the built-in editing tools that Microsoft Word and Grammarly have. I'm talking about getting out on the cutting edge. For example, I don't know if you know this, but the smartest large language model out there today, as of this taping, is Claude AI. And Claude has a context window of 150,000 words. 
This means you can cut and paste an entire book. So if you have a novel in progress, you can upload your entire book and then ask things like, what are the plot holes in this book? And Claude will answer it even if it has never seen the book before, even if it hasn't been analyzed by everybody on the internet. It's not just summarizing what other people have said. It's doing its own analysis of the book. And you can check it out yourself. It's mind blowing and insane that it can do this. And I've done demos of this for a lot of people and it's very freaky how well it works. And it can, you, it can analyze its own reasoning, tell you how it came to these conclusions, suggest ways to fix plot problems that fit in with the main themes of the book and the main character arcs. It can do a very deep level of analysis. Super creepy. But anyway, it can do this for you. And editors can use this as a tool. Writers can use this on their own books before they take it to a human editor um, so that the human editor can focus on more complex issues. Or if a writer can't afford an editor and was planning to publish the book without any editing at all, they can now get some editing from an AI instead of posting it problems and all. Um, writers can also use AI to brainstorm ideas, to generate outlines, to write rough drafts, to polish final manuscripts, to create series Bibles. One thing you can use AI for is to invent a whole new language to your specifications, then have the AI translate text in and out of that language. It's pretty cool. Many writers are already using AI to write, a Japanese writer uh, just used AI to help write a sci-fi novel that won Japan's most prestigious literary award. If you want to learn how to use this, check out The Creative Pen, The Nerdy Novelist, or Future Fiction Academy. They have a ton of free resources, content, author interviews, tutorials, and a whole bunch more. And I'm putting the links in the description box below as well. Okay, so... You don't have to do this either. You know, you don't have to lean into AI and get more productive than everybody else. You don't have to generate your own AI models, or you can do that if you want to. Whichever plan you, you have, whichever path you follow, you should also do this third step. But before we do that, I wanna thank our Patreon supporters at Metastellar, you guys are awesome. Metastellar is all volunteer run, so all the donations you make go directly to our writers. And we also have merch for sale, and we have two anthologies for sale, our year one anthology and our year two anthology. We're finishing up our year three anthology right now, and we have mugs and other merch. Again, the description in the description box below. Um, also, we're currently in the middle of our spring submission cycle that if you're watching this at, you know, shortly after I tape it on March 30th, our submission cycle closes tomorrow, end of day on March 31st. And everybody who's accepted is gonna be in our next anthology and we pay eight cents a word, thanks to our supporters. Thanks guys. Our next submission cycle is next October. All right, now on to plan C, how to survive in the age of AI without AI? And the answer is to be human. Uh, you're already human. Be more human. Be more visibly human. So how are the consultants doing this? So it, they're also doing the other AI challenge, other strategies. And they're also leading into being human. So, for example, they're providing uh, compassion, motivation, human empathy, and understanding. They're helping clients overcome resistance to change. They're cheerleading. They're hand-holding. All these, like, human emotional things. Um, and they are promoting this. So, let's, let's take an old-world example. Would you buy a sweater that has uneven knitting, ragged threads, ugly colors, and cost 10 times more than other sweaters? 
You might if you learn that it's handmade by a local craftsperson or that Taylor Swift has a sweater just like it. The difference there is that you know it's handmade. You know Taylor Swift likes it. That's the human connection. You know that a human made it with care. You might know this human or feel identification with them because they live in your area. Uh, or because a human who, who you care about, Taylor Swift, also cares about this product. So you will want to care about it as well. AIs don't care because they're not real well, yet. Knock on wood. They don't have compassion, empathy, all this stuff. They, they're just faking it. When you use Duolingo, the Duolingo owl that's reminding you to practice Spanish, it doesn't really care if you skip your practice session and you know it. You, you're gonna just ignore it, you're gonna swipe it away because it's not a real owl who really cares about you. It, it's an AI fake generated thing. But if your friend texted you and said, hey, you know, are you up for a Spanish practice session? You're gonna have a much harder time saying, nah, I don't feel like it. Because it's a human. Because we have that human connection. Because somebody cares about you and you care about them. So lean into this if you are a creative person. And for creative people, there are lots of opportunities to lean into it. You All you have to do is just capitalize on it. So for example, the first thing that everybody should do is look for opportunities to meet with your public face-to-face. -face. Read your books at local libraries and bookstores. Go to conventions. Attend other literary events. Accept invitations for small book clubs. Get out there and meet your public. Make a personal one-on-one -on -one connection. And also make these connections through other channels. Write personal emails, um, send out newsletters, do podcasts and YouTube videos, Zoom events, uh, and of course, social media. But if you do this, do it in a way that's deliberately human. Don't overproduce these videos. Don't overformat your newsletter to make it look super pretty and corporate because then it will look fake. It will look AI generated. Instead of using AI or automation tools to do your social media and spamming your followers with generic content, be unique, be different, be authentic, be quirky, be flawed, and be human. And that's how we're going to survive. So what do you think? What's your plan for AI? Are you excited about the potential? Are you going to lean into being human? Are you going to do some combination of these strategies? Are you going to retire early? Let me know in the comments below or, um, um, or what else? Oh yeah. If you want to like follow me and like, as I talk more about this, subscribe to the channel or subscribe to our newsletter. All the links are in the description box below and I'll see you guys soon. Oh yeah. In my next video, I'm going to talk about why AI is not going to take all jobs and why this is a good thing. All right. Bye, everybody.